Welcome to the President's Diary, where we take a look at His Excellency Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali's week of activities. His Excellency started his week by addressing the nation on Budget 2024 on Sunday evening. When you look at what is required for the transformation of our country, many people are speaking about the push in infrastructure investment, the level of investment we are making in, infra in infrastructure. Well, how are we going to improve the traffic, the time you spend in traffic? How are we going to improve the efficiency of the road safe, uh, of the road system? How are we going to improve the safety of the roads? How are we going to save the eight hours that you waste, manpower hours, crossing the bridge if we don't build a new four-lane bridge? How are we going to expand and open up new lands for housing? How are we going to satisfy the demand for that and, and, and ensure we fulfill our mandate of creating 50,000 new house lots? How are we going to open up new lands for agriculture? How are we going to open up new lands for industries? How are we going to put the private se sector capital to work if we don't create the enabling environment by investing in the infrastructure? But one of the important transformations that is needed that Budget 2024 cannot give is the transformation of the minds and the transformation of the way we think. You can have everything you want in Budget 2024, but if you can't help yourself but thinking in a, from a w race window, thinking from an ethnic window, think, thinking from a bias window, thinking from a window that's, that is self-serving to yourself, then we can't change that. Budget 2024 can't change that. Later that evening, President Ali praised the Guyana Hindu Dharmic Sabha for its strong principles and values, which he said have nurtured some of the country's greatest leaders, thinkers, and innovators. The head of state, who spoke at the organization's 50th anniversary celebration, said the Dharmic Sabha is part of the social fabric of Guyana. His Excellency President Ali swore in attorney Emily Dotson as the new chair of the Law Reform Commission on Tuesday. Dotson previously served as a member of the commission under the chairmanship of retired Justice Bisrat Singh Roy, who resigned before the end of his tenure. President Ali also administered the oath of office to former Member of Parliament and Indigenous Rights Advocate Lennox Schumann, who will also serve the Law Reform Commission for three years. In an interview on Wednesday, President Ali shared his thoughts on the meeting of Guyana's and Venezuela's foreign ministers in Brazil. This meeting precedes President Maduro's visit to Guyana. The meeting is a very important step in fulfilling uh, what we agreed on in St. Vincent, and that was the establishment of... Uh, uh, this commission to look at all the consequential matters to develop an agenda so that the conversation between the two countries uh, can continue and setting the stage for the second meeting between the two presidents. So for us, it's important from uh, the agreement perspective, that is we have quickly moved towards honoring the agreement, implementing uh, the, the agreement. Secondly, it continues the conversation that is very critical, uh, the conversation between uh, Guyana and Venezuela. It adds to the stability and peaceful environment. And importantly, it gives us now the opportunity to outline the, uh, an agenda uh, with items that uh, both sides uh, will, will want to speak on, you know, issues of trade, climate, energy security, um, uh, initiative to expand our trade, to improve our neighbor uh, relationship. These are all things that are crucial in a stable and peaceful uh, environment. On Thursday, the head of state was presented with art crafts from Lindener, Renwick Geary. Geary, an artist specializing in wood art, created the Kasi crown and a pair of vases for President Ali through the intricate use of several pieces of Guyana's wood, including Greenheart, Womara, and Duco. On Thursday evening, President Irfan Ali arrived in Accra, Ghana, on an official visit to the West African country. President Ali met the President of Ghana, His Excellency Nana Akufu Addo, to discuss matters of mutual interest. During his visit, the Head of State was bestowed with the prestigious Global Africa Leadership Award at the Africa Prosperity Champions Awards and Presidential Gala Dinner in recognition of his strong and transformational leadership since taking office in August 2020. For the first time, I am at an international stage and they have not introduced me from Ghana. <laughs> Every time a Guyanese goes somewhere, he's introduced as from Ghana. And I'm in Ghana now, and I'm, and I'm introduced as I'm from Guyana. So we are making progress. I come from a very small country of six different people, six different ethnic groups. 
a country that was divided by external forces, forces that sought their own selfish interests and used what is the greatest asset of humanity, that is our differences, our ethnicity, as a tool of division. But today, I am proud to lead a country where the people elected a minority. I am from the minority religion of Islam, and the people of that country elected me as their president. That is where, that is how we have grown. Speaking during a panel discussion on Saturday at the Africa Prosperity Dialogues 2024, President Irfan Ali reiterated his call for reparations. And I think it's very important that we make this interjection. Because if we don't make this interjection, we'll be doing a serious injustice to all those who have fought so strongly for us to be in the position we are in today in relation to reparation. And that is the question that was posed, whether we recognize the need for reparation. I think we have long passed that question. That recognition has already been made that reparation must be paid. And the rec so there is no longer any debate about whether there is a recognition. We have gone past that. The very fact that we have took hundreds of years to move to the stage of an apology also signifies that the recognition has been made by those who are guilty. And the guilty party has moved towards an apology. So we should never again take this debate back to whether there is recognition. What is needed now is the mechanism, the structure. How are we going to move from apology to a mechanism that leads to reparation? And that definitely cannot take another 100 years. Presenting his address at the Africa Prosperity Dialogues 2024, President Ali elucidated the significant impact that participating in an event of this nature can have on addressing global issues. On occasions like these, we give ourselves an excellent opportunity to showcase the difference we can make, to showcase the opportunities we bring, and to showcase the ideas we can contribute to solving global problems and global issues. And why not? We sit today in a region where 30% of the world's mineral reserve reside, 8% of the world's natural gas. For a matter of fact, 55 countries in Africa has proven natural gas reserves, 40% of the world's gold and 90% of the world's chromium and platinum. The largest reserve of diamond, platinum, uranium, 65% of the world's arable land, and 10% of the planet's internal renewable fresh water source. That is what the region possess. How are we going to deploy this to solve the global issues surrounding climate security, energy security, food security, and human transformation. We have been blessed in this region with the natural assets to provide the solution. We have been blessed with the brain power to provide the ideas and the policies that can lead to the solution. What is required is a commitment to action, a commitment to meeting targets, and a commitment to staying on track with the targets we set. This is the President's diary providing insights into the weekly activities of His Excellency Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali. Thank you for watching and we'll join us again next time.